thank you for tuning in to any of our videos. We also want to just ask your forgiveness if anything in this comes off offensive or abrasive. It is not our intent to cause division. What we would like you to do is enter into just a relationship as a believer with us, knowing that we're as much of a work in progress as you are, and that you would continue to pray for Nehemiah Abilene. So whenever I, you know, part of my story of meeting Jesus is uh, I heard an audible voice and I start walking from Dallas to Denver in the month of January. Uh, ended up waiting until about mid-February. There's a massive Arctic storm on the horizon and I end up walking through it. And I get to a place called, uh, so Clayton, New Mexico is one town up from it. I can't remember the one. Huh? Te and a text line, Texas. Thank you, sir. Uh, so I'm in text line, Texas. There's an all subs there. I see a hotel sign in the distance. And, uh, and I'm like, okay, so at least I know there's some stuff, that, you know, I'm, and it's, it's cold. It had dropped way below zero the morning before that. And I walk into this all subs and there's a beautiful girl working. And I get distracted, fully distracted, to the point where I'm like helping her take out the trash and all kind of like distracted. <laughs> and, uh, and then she's like, okay, my shift's up, I gotta go home. And, uh, and so I'm like, oh Lord God, I'm, I'm walking. And so uh, this lady gives me a ride to Clayton, which is tw 12 miles maybe. And I see a sign while we're driving and it says, don't pick up any hitchhikers in this area because there's a, like a federal prison right there. And, uh, and I get to Clayton and I, I call who we always call when we get in trouble. I call mama and, uh, and hey, she got me a cheap hotel that night because it was literally snows piling up as fast as you can count it, you know. And uh, I get there and I started getting rid of all my stuff. So I, I get there and I make, I'm making deals with God. Like I know my faith was compromised. I know I compromised. I'm on this spiritual journey, right? You told me to go and then I was ready to give it up if she was going to give it up. Just being honest. And uh, all fully out the window. But God was trying to show me some things like his faithfulness. And so I get rid of like half of my gear. I leave it in the room and the next morning I get up, I start walking buy a pack of cigarettes, smoke one cigarette. I quit smoking, throw my brand new pack of cigarettes away. Did that like seven times. Uh, and I'm walking, I'm walking between in what they call the Raton Pass from Clayton, New Mexico to Trinidad, Colorado. It's 99 miles. And it's all, I'm listening. The only thing I got this crank radio and I'm listening uh, to, uh, to cat. The only thing you can find is Catholic radio. And, uh, and they're talking about, well, you know, if blah, blah, blah happens, we're closing, the retirement pass will, be, pass will be closed. Snow's coming in this way. I'm watching coyotes, like, trail me two coyotes out in the distance because there's nothing out there. If you've ever been out there, there's nothing out there. So I'm watching them trail me out there, and I, I'm, I'm so I just start worshiping. Like, it was a moment where I'm like, I know I let you down. I know I let you down, and I'm okay dying out here. You know what I mean? Uh, because I, I gave up. I still had the magical Jesus, like you had to earn it somehow. That uh, if I faltered, then I wouldn't get the magical Jesus powers that he had in store for me. Which was all what he, the whole reason he wanted to break all this mentality out of me. And he says, look, I'm moving on hearts. This is what he said to me. He said, I, he said I'm faithful. There's somebody coming. I may have to move on 50 different hearts, but the 50th one is already on his way. Be grateful for the 49 that don't listen to me because they'll grow in intimacy because of their rebellion. I'll draw them closer. And at that moment, I knew that no matter what I did, he would always be faithful. So in all of it, those times whenever you thought you've blasphemed the spirit or taken the Lord's name in vain or messed up one too many times, what I'll tell you is he is always faithful. He cannot deny himself. The blood is bigger than anything that you can ever imagine or do, no matter what it is, at any moment at the, when the posture of your heart shifts and is softened, just, just like that. You just receive it. I don't know how to tell you to get to that place. There's no good recipe for it. It's going to take fear and trembling, or, you know, frustration and trembling and uh, you're going to have to be in awe of God and, and you're going to have to have a moment where you've fumbled. I think it's, I don't know if her name's Hannah, but in first Samuel, there's a prayer by Samuel's mother. Is it Hannah? It's called Hannah's prayer. 
and it's just really powerful and it has to do with God's faithfulness. I would, enc- yeah, I would encourage you if you have an opportunity to read that, to read it because it's very, very powerful and about God's faithfulness. <clears throat> 